Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show, and uh, my third episode of the of my special Road to WrestleMania 29 special. With what that means is that I I, I find some old wrestlers to talk to, uh, former pro wrestlers or people who are currently in the business, or even have a big uh, legacy like the the person that I'm uh, talking to right now. Uh, this man, uh, you know. Probably needs no introduction, really, but uh, I'm going to give him one anyway. He comes from the one of the greatest uh, wrestling family uh, known to man. His name is Chavo Guerrero Sr., and if you know Eddie Guerrero and Chavo Guerrero Jr. and Hector and Mondo and Gory, the whole Guerrero family, well, here is Chavo Guerrero Sr. Welcome to the show, my friend. All right, my brother, but never, never old and never uh, has been. I'm still wrestling. And I'm just mature, brother. So let's not introduce me as, as an old wrestler. <laughs> Even though I am, uh, you know, I'm just mature. Man. I'm seasoned, brother. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're still seasoned. Wrestling. It's still wrestling, man. Okay. The Lord has given me still my faculties working. <laughs> still go up there and uh, and be proud of the work I do in the ring. Yeah, uh, are you uh, are you like uh, like what if you could say what your style is? Uh, what would you say like? Uh, style is international, brother. Every, and, and anywhere the Guerreros have gone, not only myself but any of the Guerreros fit in because my father always showed us to work from the right and the left. You know, I mean, the guys from Mexico work on the right. Guys over here in the states work on the left. So you know, there's always a clash of styles because they were not taught except one way. With my father. We would do one, one hold the right, then we go to the left. Then we go to the right, then we go to the left, over and over and over and over. So when we go anywhere with our style and, and, and the way we have adapted, you know, and and, 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 it, and it's simple for us because we wrestle. We, we, we know how to wrestle. I mean, if all else fails, just get out there and wrestle. And that's what we do, get wrestle, entertain, and communicate with the people. And then, then you fit in in the style. And, and wrestling pretty much has been in your your blood and in your family since you I were born. I grew up. That's right, brother. When I grew, when I was born, my father was already a world champion. So uh, I was born into a world champion family, you know. And and even Eddie, when Eddie was born, my the father was the uh, light heavyweight champion of the world. So we're all we're born in. No, 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 not that necessarily that he had to be a champion, but he was. And of course, you know, on my mother's side, her her brother was. A world champion, and and, her, and three of her brothers have uh, were champions, and 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 were pro wrestlers, and you know I think my brother Mondo, uh, counted like eleven or twelve, immediate family as of wrestlers. So we're like the wrestling. Uh, we're the, you were the flying Walendas. We're we're the wrestling Guerreros, brother. <laughs> And big it, time, and it's, big time. And it's really cool to see the fact that your your son Chavo uh, Jr. is still uh, wrestling now on TNA. He is, he is, and he's doing great, and he's loving it, and he's having a great time. And I mean, I can see the difference. Where you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, WWE is probably the greatest company right now, but you know, uh, it's just so much pressure there. And um, now that he's with TNA, he's, he's having so much more fun. I, I think, of course, you know, you got to ask him. But I see it in his matches where, of course, his matches are always good, but, you know, where he, he just a little walk of times where he, he doesn't have that much pressure. And, and, of course, they're using him a lot better. You don't have to. And with all due respect to Horsewoggle, they're, they're not they're not shitting on, his, on him with, with the uh, the midget angles and, and oh, this yeah. and this and that. So, you know, he's, he's, he's happy and uh, making a living and still what he likes and what he does best and... And it's, it's all cool. It's all good, man. He's happy. And, and you know what? I don't know if he's making any more money or not. I know that he's make, making as, as good as money as, as he was and going through a lot of tours. But he's happier. So that's good, man. That's a lot more times with his kids. And, and that's what it's all about, brother. You know, you, you can have the, the people that are wealthy and money, but they're very unhappy uh, in their inner soul. And, and my son is very happy. He's got a great wife, you know. Uh, and she's a good mother, and of course, you know, he's a great dad, and, and uh, he's a good wrestler, good yeah. entertainer, and he's, he's, he's uh, gone through a lot, you know, he's gone through, not, yeah, I had to go through my dad, you know, to uh, have that um, the barrier, but, you know, sometimes it, it works for you, sometimes it works against you, uh, but, you know, those are truths to feel, it's how I have to feel my, my father's, myself, 
uh, Eddie's, you know, he went to the Eddie thing, and then, and then you know, he went to the, you know, Eddie, he said to pay a, a big price. So he's, he's, he's there. He's there where he wants to be, I think. Uh, I think he's happy, like I said. Uh, you know, we don't touch too much about it, and like I said, you'd have to ask him to really tell you uh, uh, the, his thoughts on it, but I, I noticed it, and, and uh, we get along a lot better. You know, there's always, oh, cool. in this business, a lot of jealousy, it's a lot of end, and we were, <laughs> We were taught to be competitors all the way, so we're still competing against each other. We're his father uh, and son, our brothers and brothers, or whatever, you know. And, but you know, when that comes down to it, we all love each other. And I, I remember uh, how I kind of got introduced to you was uh, I, I haven't really seen a lot of tapes that, that where you wrestled, but I remember just like it was yesterday. I hardly believe it's been almost almost ten years. Well, I'd say about nine oh, years. Now. It was only yesterday, my friend. When when, <laughs> when, when, when you uh, were in the WWE, you were uh, Chavo's manager for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old exclusive weight still to this day, man. You know, of course, Vince can change that anytime he wants. Oh, sure. But I, you know, I've still got that record, so that's a good record to have. Yeah. I mean, at 55, I became another world champion, you know, six times. So, hey, it was it was an honor for me, and I had a good run, and it was it was it was it was nice. Yeah. It was nice to work yeah. there, and cool. and uh, made yeah, it was just it was just great, you know, being back in my environment, and uh, and then you know, it was a very great experience. Yeah, and, and you know, that's what I, I like about you know professor wrestling and. And I, I've asked a lot of people, or the last few wrestlers that I've had on the air or had on my show, uh, this question, and, and I'm going to ask it to you now because since Dude. since you have since you are uh, known for being a part of the uh, famous uh, re- wrestling legacy and a, a family of wrestlers, what do you think about when people say wrestling is fake? Well, brother, you know I used to get all riled up about it because I, I you know, I. I, I, I saw my dad when he used to come bleeding, and I mean, I'm, I'm talking when I was a little kid, man. And uh, I've been in it, and and fake in the picture to me is not real. And there is no imaginary mattress there, you know. And I, I, like I said, I used to get riled up about it because I would get mad if people respected it. But you know what? If they want to believe it's fake, that's that's what they want to believe. That's that's. Uh, I don't get riled up about it anymore. It's, it's like I tell them, you know. Uh, it's whatever you want to believe. If, if, the, the, I mean, there's people that, that believe so much that it's not fake, if you want to put the word fake, that if you tell them it is, they, they'll say bullshit. And if there's people that, that don't believe it, I don't care what you tell them. So if they're going to believe what they want. Now, of course, you know, then we go back to if you really want to find out, or we'll get in there with a, with a, with a wrestler, which they're not going to do, because they'll kill them. We're trained to, but it's, it's entertainment, brother. It's, it's, it's wrestling entertainment, but, you know, there's uh, we respect each other. I mean, if you hit somebody in the nose, they're going to hit you right back in the nose. Oh, sure. You know, there's certain vital points that you, you learn not to hit because you can kill somebody. We're not up there. This is not the old Roman Coliseum times, brother. We're up there to, to convince you that it's real. And sometimes we do it, you know, to the extreme, and sometimes guys that don't do it to an extreme, like... Like uh, a lot of it, they see now everything is court draft, and uh, and if it doesn't, see, if the rope breaks, they still go in and do the damn high spot off the ro- off the second rope if the third rope is not there because they don't know any better. But you know the way we were taught, uh, better or, or worse, you know, just at that time, you know, we were just giving the finish. You're going to go over you, this and that, and then you go up there and you have your match, and and uh, you you would not you wouldn't let the people control you. You would control people, and. Uh, you know, the, our, our big challenge was being the last match, especially when they had already seen a cage match, blood match, midget match, lady, women match, tag matches. And, uh, and uh, you know, you're up there, and I don't care how much of a fan you are. It's uh, four hours of wrestling or three and a half, and you got your kids with you, and you're tired. So your job is to go up there and, and, and give those people their money's worth. And, and if you're the bad guy, you want them to hate you. If you're the good guy, you want them to love you and convince them and give money's worth and convince them to buy a ticket for next week because that's where we make our living with ticket buyers, man. That's just that's the way it is. Yeah, and and and, I'll, and sometimes I wonder if uh, 
if a real you know, whether they're real fans or not, if they really realize like where the revenue is coming from, not just coming from a, a billion dollar corporation. It, it comes from the fans that that purchase the tickets. And well, that, of course, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it uh, nowadays uh, more so. Nowadays, it comes a lot from uh, from merchandise, which is great. Well, you know, when I in my time when I was especially in my younger days. It might have to, of course, it came from the gate. You know, they uh, the marketing savvy wasn't there. You know, this is that's that's one thing that this he's, he's no genius. There is no genius, but uh, you know, he he marketed wrestling to where, uh, where you know, wrestlers they're making the companies making a lot of money, but so so are wrestlers they're making a lot more money than they used to, and that's a lot has to do with marketing. You know, of course, the TV, the TV. They still, it's, it's still, we still don't have a union, to put it that way. Uh, uh, we still don't have a pension. We still don't have a medical plan. But, you know, I don't think, this, this business is so far different from any other business or e- entertainment or professional sport. It's, it's, it's wrestling. It's in, it's in a class all by itself. It's an art. It's, it's, a, it's a sport. It's entertainment. It's, uh, it's a, so far, it's whatever you want to put all into <laughs> one. And it's different, but, you know, it appeals to women, cats, dogs, grandmas, grandpas, men, kids. It appeals to everybody, man. That's one thing about wrestling. It appeals to everybody. And, and that's that's what's that's what's great about it because uh, wrestling has, has had its legacy from the ups and the downs to to the good times and the bad. And, and you know, what? see, I, I've been a wrestling fan since probably since the early 90s, and I've you know, I'm only 29 years old, so I'm, I'm still kind of a kid, more or less. But I watched some, a lot of shared wrestling, and and I've always I've always had a lot of respect for what you guys have done in the ring, whether it's choreographed or not. I have always respected the fact of how much traveling you had to do, how much uh, hardly days off you ever get, and, and I don't know. I'm sure that's different between each each territory and everything. But I, I've just been a just a, a fan that has always had respect. And that's why I wanted to yeah. talk to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, respect comes with everything. I mean, you got to respect your your father, your mother, and and your elders. And of course, you know, a lot of a lot of these young kids. They, I'm not saying that. For example, if I walk into a dressing room, I don't expect anybody to kiss my hand, but I surely do expect them to get up at least and, and shake my hand, because you know, because of us, we have paid the road, brother. Yeah, we have paid the road for these kids to get in there. But, yeah. And it's it's just a sign of respect, you know. And, and if, if I have respect in there to go in there and, and shake everybody's hand, I don't care if they're if it's the first match or their thirty thousand match. I'll go in there and I introduce myself and hello, hello, hello. Some of these kids that they, they just look at you like you know uh, this old bastard or whatever. You know what they they say it under the breath because if they will sit up in the ring, I'll kick the shit out of them. Brother. <laughs> That's one thing about the Guerreros, brother. We can back it up. I don't care how big you are, how tall you are, how fat you are, how slim you are. We're, we'll kick. We'll, we're, that's what we've been trained to to wrestle, man. That's all we've ever done. And, I and, mean, amongst other yeah. things, but that's where when it comes to wrestling, we're you can say black belt in wrestling all the way, brother. All of us. And, and, and that we love it. Yeah. We love it. And and that's and uh, we keep learning. Oh yeah, and we keep learning. Oh yeah, heck yeah. Of course. You gotta, you gotta learn it, and, and that's uh, what leads me to my next question. Uh, how, how does it feel inside to know that your family, you know, the legacy that you guys have built together, because it wasn't just a, a certain individual; it was everybody. How does it feel to know that uh, that for generations to come, people will will always remember the name Guerrero and re- relate well, it to wrestling? Well, yeah, that's that's a, it, it, it's an easy question, and at the same time, it's a hard question because. Sometimes it sounds like you're, uh, you know, you're bragging or something. But you know, uh, my, my my father started this legacy in the wrestling, and uh, he kept it up with his kids. And he never uh, forced us to get into it. We we chose to to get into it. And of course, he said, but the only the only uh, he said, I never force you. You want to get into it, you get into it. The only thing that I require is that I train you. And of course, he trained us. And uh, and you know we we just didn't start our pro brother. We started up putting up rings. We started up even making rings. We started up uh, putting up chairs and selling tickets and knowing the promotion and go, and getting up six in the morning and sitting the ring. I mean, putting the ring in the truck, going to school, coming back, driving to the town, taking the ring out, take a shower, put your put your uh, blazer 
so you can usher the people or go pick up the wrestlers, come back, have the wrestling match, sell the tickets, count the money, uh, put up the chairs, put the ring back in the truck, drive back home. And then the next morning, get up, unload the ring truck, because you got to take the truck home. Oh, my brother, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that was kind of fast, but that's the way we were brought up. <laughs> and, of course, in the wrestling, you know, we we would train for hours, and, 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 and we loved it. We loved it. You know, like I said, my dad taught us right and Right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. Of course, sometimes we didn't agree or we didn't understand, but he knew what he was doing. That's why he was one of the best. And uh, and, uh, and then we went into the high school. And, uh, you know, Mando and I went to the Olympics, went to the juvenile games in Mexico City. And then I, I got a, a, a scholarship to UTEP. I was, and then I coached it, brother. And then I turned pro. So it's not like this was, uh, we were born into it. We have put time into it. Oh, yeah. We have. Uh, earned the right to be to where, where, where we are, not by, only by name, but by by sacrifice and, and by uh, 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 putting our attitude and and and, and uh, our sacrificing our our wrestling and, and, and our love into it. Love, we love this sport, man. We love in in, in every which way. We you know we took judo, karate, brother, we, we everything, man. Just about. I mean, we don't know everything. You think that they, that you think you know everything, you know nothing. We're always learning, but we know a hell of a lot, hell of a lot of wrestling, brother. And we surely know how to defend ourselves in the ring, and and all this has come through years and years and years. I think Chavo's coming out with a new shirt. He told me TNA's coming out with a new shirt, and it says 75 years of of continued legacy in in the in the professional wrestling. That's not years combined that's just since my dad started okay and, and you know it has kept going to where he is now that's a lot of time brother oh yeah yeah that's now, a... if you and if you start accumulating the years that that every, all each one of us has been wrestling hell <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody gonna touch us man you oh, know no nobody would but no. uh it's 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 fun and and and, and we still uh enjoy you know getting up i still enjoy getting up in the ring of course I don't do what I used to. If I do, I'll do it a little slower. But you know what? What I enjoy is when I leave the ring, the people are happy to see. I, I, I gave them their money's worth. Oh, sure. Of course, you know, you get the, oh, you old man and all that. That just makes you work a little harder, brother. <laughs> and then show them that, yeah, I'm the old man. But you don't tell them that. You just show them that at the end, you just walk and say, how's that for an old man? Hey, you keep walking, brother. And, and, and touche, you just slapped it with a white glove. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's yes, cool. Sir. It's cool to it's cool to see that your brother Hector is uh, like the Spanish commentator. Hector, man, for TNA. he's a kicking the mass, brother. <laughs> he's doing that TNA uh, Spanish commentary, and man, him and that Willie guy, the poor Willie. Uh, I don't know his best name. <laughs> yeah, I forget but, uh, too. They, but... They're good, man. They got him going. And yeah. Hector, you know, he he's uh, you know, we we all became bilingual. You know, we we're all born in Mexico, except Eddie. And when uh, my, we would go to Mexico, my dad would uh, keep us in the English uh, schools so we could be, you know, keep up the English. Sure. So, and then when we came to the States, you know, because we were like these back and forth, we came to the States, we talked Spanish in the house and, and English with our friends. And so we became fully bilingual. And, we, and you know, my dad told us, one of these days you're going to need it. And sure enough, man. And uh, we love it. Oh yeah, and, and he was right. And, and yes, uh, sir, he was. And, and uh, I, I watched. Uh, see, WWE produced a couple, a couple of DVDs based on not only you guys' legacy in wrestling, but also a couple of DVDs before Eddie died, and then one after he died. And I got, I watched something before he died, and uh, it's basically talk about how you guys grew up and and how it was for him because he was like, he was like almost not. He was a baby of the family, right? He was the last... last yeah, of the... yeah, yeah. He was the last Stafford. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, now, Eddie, why, he, here we go with the... There's so much con, uh, similarities, but a, a, also a lot of controversy in our in our wrestling because Eddie was so much younger than us uh-huh. that uh, Kim and Chavo, you know, even though Chavo, uh, Eddie is his uncle, they, they grew up together. And they started just about wrestling together. Of course, Eddie started a little bit uh, faster. But um, Eddie, when he started in Juarez, he, all the boys were gone. I mean, I was gone. I was in, at the Olympic. 
Andre was at the Olympic. Hector, I think, was also at the Olympic. So when Eddie started, you know, there was a lot of jealousies. There continues to be jealousies. You know, every time we get in, we have to watch out because there are a lot of boys, especially from Mexico, they get jealous and they, well, like we couldn't beat Chavo, so we're going to try to beat Mondo. Well, we couldn't beat Mondo, which, okay, we're going to try to beat Hector. Well, we couldn't beat Hector, now we're going to try to beat Eddie. Well, and then Chavo and myself, we got to watch out for that. They're just out to, and, and some mean people, you know, so you got to watch out and be careful. So anyway, getting back to Eddie, when he started, he had none of the brothers around, so he had to uh, bust his balls, brother, you know, to uh, and take some of these people on, and, and he learned the hard way. You know, of course, we'd come in after a while and, and take care of business. But while he was at the wrestling match, and, you know, there were people that were trying to fuck him up for life. And, um, and I mean that. I mean, yeah. seriously. Seriously. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I was so amazed at the fact, because I've, I've seen a lot of the matches from Eddie because it's kind of pretty much my time of watching wrestling pretty right. much, and that's where I started. So yeah, because you don't know the real wrestling, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm learning, and that's what you know. You're teaching, you you're teaching me. You <laughs> but but what's really cool about it is the fact that he he uh you know he he had a great career, and it's it just so sad, just so sad that he died so young. And I and I and I don't want to bring this interview down to any notches, but I mean, I have to ask you, and you've probably been asked this many times, but I want to ask you. What was your reaction the day found out that he passed away? Oh, I didn't. I, I, I didn't go out for two days. I turned off the TV. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I I, I turned my cell off. I, I didn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. I just, you know, it was like people were knocking the door. I wouldn't answer. Uh, uh, I just, you know, I, I I wasn't even going to go to the funeral because I knew that once I saw him, it was real. Yeah. I, I was in denial. I was in denial. I can even move. But I didn't want to, you know, I, I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know. It was just so hard. It took me like a, a couple of months to really break down and cry because uh, I was so uh, flabbergasted, man. And I was in awe, you know. I was, uh, had a, you know, we were all, uh, praise God, we were all brought up Christians. And, and I had a lot of uh, questions for God. And, I, and who am I to question God, you know. And, and I needed time for myself. And. And, uh, I, you know, it's, it's hard to explain. It's hard yeah. to explain. You know, and, and uh, why, why, why? But, you know, uh, some people say, and, and, and for us it's hard to say that one is better than the other. If you ask the girl who's the best one, they're going to tell you. If you ask me, tell you. If you ask mother, <laughs> he's going to tell you. Because we're competitors. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it, Eddie was the best one, and he had to be, because he had, he learned from all the other ones. Yeah. He learned from his, grand, from his dad. He learned from me. He learned from Mondo, from Hector. And, you know, and, and, and then Chavo now has got to be better because he's learning from everybody. Oh, sure. You know, and, and, uh, and that's just the way it is. It, it goes on. And, and then, you know, like my son and I, we he adapted the same name, adopted the same name as, as, as Chavo. You know, I didn't tell him no. I didn't tell him yes. That's what he wanted. Okay, go for it. Um, but, you know, we uh, sometimes we, it gets to where, you know, well, you know, there's jealousy to one way or the other, but... Uh, he told me the other day, oh, you know, uh, I admitted that you were better than me. I said, no, look, get that out of your mind. <laughs> my dad was better than me. I was better than him in my time. You are better than me in your time. There, you, you cannot go say, well, who would have won? We'll never know, man. <laughs> that's the past, brother. Yeah, that's the future. The future is not here. The present is now. Yep. So this is your time. You're shining, and you're the best, period. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know what I mean? And that, that's brought us a lot closer together, and it makes sense. Instead of, well, you know, because like I said, we're 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 all very competitors, and and we see each other in the ring. We don't brotherhood. We see a competition. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and more between us brothers because it's, it's we were competing for for perfection. Because my dad was a perfectionist. So I don't I don't know if that makes sense, but I kind of put it in my words. But it makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> oh, and, hey, and, and you know that's all that matters. Is, you know, I mean, you, you're the one telling the story, and I love hearing that's stories good, like brother, that. That's brother. It's my story, so I tell it the way I want. <laughs> They're like my book. Hey, man, hey, it's my book. You, when you write your book, you tell it the way you sure, want. Sure, <laughs> sure. Oh, uh, I was gonna say, uh, you know, when when Eddie wrestled in WCW, and I was a big fan of WCW. What what was your uh, what was your thought about, thoughts about WCW? Did you enjoy you it? You know at what? All? At that time, I was not into wrestling. I was trying to get my mind out of it. 
you know, I was uh, teaching and, and um, um, you know, I messed myself up a couple of times. and yeah. So I was trying to get my mind out and I wouldn't even watch it, you know. I was uh, doing, I was in another frame of mind and, and uh, doing some other stuff. You know, I had some person, some, I had a furniture store and I had this and I just tried to get out, you know, my mind out of it. But, you know, little by came back to it. But, uh, I, you know, what did I think about it? Well, what, what, which way do you want me to go? I mean, hell, all, all they did was just steal the, steal the uh, I mean, they put it in, in the nucleus. They stole the, the talent from WWE. Well, I'm not going to say steal. They offered him a better deal. When Vince was down and, you know, he went through his steroid, uh, that he was selling steroids stuff and all that. Yeah, yeah. So they took the talent. They offered him more money. Good for them. You know, and, and so they, 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 they but they hot shot the territory. They, 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 they messed it up. They didn't know what to do with it anymore. You know, you can only run a whole coke so many times and, and uh, people get tired of it. And then, you know, you had some idiots running up there, Bischoff and, and Russo. What the hell do they know? Every territory they've been in, they messed up. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's good for a while, but I mean, anybody can be, and I'm not going to say, I want to put it, put it in perspective this way. Not anybody can become a champion, but you know, in, in our business, uh, you can put Hulk Hogan as a champion. I mean, I don't know. I have nothing against Hulk Hogan, but Hulk Hogan don't know a damn thing about wrestling. He don't even know. Have you ever seen Hulk Hogan in a wrestling stand? No. Why? Because he don't know how. Period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Right? yeah. He draws a lot of money, man. He's got more money than I do. And, and, uh, and I'm a can... better wrestler. So who's the better wrestler? <laughs> but here's the thing: if if you don't know how to program him right, you don't know how to book him right. And you should ride on TV, you want to get a burning mountain. Yeah. And that's what happened. You know, they, they had this TV, they had all these uh, millions of dollars, and, and uh, Bishop, he hot shot at the territory, and, and then what do you do? You know, it's not, how, how, it's, it's, it's hard enough getting there, but what really counts is how long do you last, man. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's why you got to end it up to win. He's, He's lasted, and he lasts, and he lasts, and, and his ratings go up and down. Well, of course they do. It's like anything else, the stock market. Same thing. <laughs> but as long as you maintain a level, man, and, and he's still the greatest company in the world. So, I mean, what can you say? Right? Yeah. And, 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 that, and that just and that's just the thing too. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking thinking a lot of people probably didn't think that WCW was going to last after the whole NWA angle, but it was only a matter of time until they until they finally closed its doors. But I, I kind of missed WCW because I really liked watching Nitro and and it was cool to see like Eddie you know being a cruiserweight and getting a, a little bit of a push. I think they could have pushed him a little yeah, bit further. Yeah, they could have pushed him a lot more. Yeah, but uh, you know, they, they, they you had Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff, as, as you do today in TNA. In yeah, the they're still there, man. But you know what? They're, they're, they're not. They're, they're they're maintaining it a million people average, but I mean a million viewers. But well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I mean, you got a lot of talent there that they don't give a chance to, and they keep. You know, catching people and catching and, and copying the, the, I mean, I don't see, I haven't seen a, an angle or a, a storyline that it has been original in TNA that they have not copied from WWE. Yeah. The yeah. marriage, the, everything is copied. <laughs> what the, can't you come out with something new, you know? Of course I not. mean, <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's easy for me because I've been in it all my life, but I don't know. And of course, they're there, you know. They're yeah. like, uh, they're like seven, seven up. Never had it, never will. But they keep drinking it. So what the hell? <laughs> of course, back in, of course, back in the day. I mean, when, well, when, even when you were wrestling, when you were younger, there was really no storyline. There was just focus on the wrestling. But well, uh, yeah, there was so. There's always a storyline. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the the well, one, not not as much as it is now. But yeah, I mean, you know, you got to come back with a. You gotta leave the people, the the people, something to come back with, you know. Or, sure. But not as much, you know. Before it was, you know, you come and see the wrestler, and and usually the storyline was the main event. The yeah. Match. <laughs> now it's uh, it's every match, which is good, man. Which is good, you know. And I, I like I said, uh, wrestling back at that time was great. Now it's it's, it's more showmanship. It's more entertainment. Uh, you know, back there you come out of the ring, go. I mean, out of the dressing room, go to the ring, back to the dressing room. Now you come out with music, and 
and all this and this and that. And oh, yeah. Of course, there's a lot more talking, but, you know, we used to do that <laughs> in L.A. a long time ago. They just copied the L.A. thing. But, hey, they're successful, man. So it doesn't matter what I say, don't matter what you say, don't matter what, what uh, Tom, Joe, or Dick or Harry said. <laughs> what matters is if they're successful or not. And they are successful, so, hey, what can you say? Yeah. Well, the, la the, la the last question that I have for you before we end this interview, uh, okay. basically, well, first I want to say, before I get to the last question, I want to say what an honor it's been to, to have this chat with you. I mean, thank you for for uh, giving us the, well, thanks to your father for giving us the Guerrero family legacy. Well, but thanks Jesus, first of all. Yes, and thank, thank you for, you know, just... Uh, just being able to tell your stories and, and uh, well, thank you for letting me. Man. Yeah, I mean, it's an honor and it's, it's and uh, it's an opportunity to to, uh, to speak out once again, yeah. brother, about the truth, <laughs> the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, baby. And you know, when it comes from a Guerrero, it's it's the truth. So, <laughs> but it's really cool to have you on. And the last question that I have for you is, what 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 do you want to like? But the legacy that the Guerrero family name has has come up has has uh, uh, had, what do you want people to in, in future generations uh, when they when they, they think of Guerrero, what do you want uh, them uh, oh, to think I about? I don't think I have to work on that. I think <laughs> I think it's already done. Okay. You know when you mention the name Guerrero, it's wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling Guerrero, brother. I mean, it's there. I mean. It, I don't think we can mess it up that much more, the Guerreros. I mean, we've tried here and there, not on purpose, some of us, but, but it's, it's, um, you know, we, business is good to us. We've been good to the business, and we love the business. And uh, the Guerreros have all been successful, and, and they've left their 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 their, uh, their stamp on wrestling, and it will be remembered forever, you know. I mean, and, and you know, you never know. i still got three grandsons. And they might come around. Hey, you never yeah. know, brother. Who knows? So, uh, we'll see. We'll, uh, I don't mention that much because their mom doesn't, uh, is not keen into it. Uh -huh. But hey, hey, I might, you know, grandpa gets over there and he starts talking to him. Come <laughs> here, man. <laughs> hey, they got a they, uh, they got a legacy to be proud of when they get older. When they oh, once they understand brother, they it, sure <laughs> do, man. they sure do. They should be proud of uh, everybody. Uh, and uh and you know it's just it's it's been a lot of hard work but like i said you know to us it's we we've enjoyed every minute of it we've right. been in the bad times you know because we've loved this business we loved it we learned to love it and we still do man well thanks uh just thank you for letting me do this with you thank you for uh, letting me be on your show brother yeah, and no I'm problem. Be a success and, and uh it's an interview in wrestling brother yeah, and, and that's what I, that's what I like about doing interviews. I mean, you, I always love hearing about stories and and, and, and stuff that you don't normally hear because you know I get sick and tired of hearing the same old stuff all the time. Whether it be about wrestling or music or movies, I yeah. like to go through the source and find out stuff that I've never heard of. So that's there why you're you on. well. Make sure you buy my book. It's coming out. It's not there yet. We're still writing it, but I I got me a good writer that's helping me out, and and I'm liking the way it's coming out, and it's going to be a lot of stories, a lot of. Uh, going to be different not just you know about me it's going to be about the guerreros and about life in the business and and uh it's going to be like a little uh, storyline brother it's okay. good you, you'll like it oh cool but, uh, I'll, I'll get back in touch with you brother all right i did send so you uh so you I, can give another interview we oh, can sure. log the book hell yeah i'll be happy to and i did send you a friend request on facebook just so you know i, so. Just, I just accepted a while ago brother. <laughs> all yeah, right well, man here's the game baby Hell yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Ed. Or, I was going to call you Eddie. Thanks, Chavo. Right. Thanks, That's Chavo. Thanks, family, brother. And I okay, George. I appreciate <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. This is, this is fun. All right. All right, man. Well, you, you have a great okay, night. Hey, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, take yeah. it easy, Michael. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Take it easy, uh, uh, Louie. <laughs> yeah, have a good one, man. Okay. So, bye. <laughs> And that was the legendary Chavo Guerrero Sr., my third guest of this special Road to WrestleMania 29 special. We didn't really talk about WrestleMania much in this interview, because not saying that the other interviews weren't special at all, because they all were. Every, every interview was special, but it's the fact that uh, to learn about the Guerrero family wrestling legacy, as told by uh, a Guerrero, you can't beat that. I mean, maybe like me talking to Bret Hart, 
and learn about the Hart family legacy or, or any of the other well-known wrestling uh, families that have been involved with wrestling and, and their stories. And, and you can't get anything bigger than that when it comes from the source, especially from somebody that's been involved and has a history. So I want to thank Chavo, you know, for just uh, letting me have this opportunity to do this. This is really cool. Guest number three on my special road to WrestleMania 29, a uh, little special that will air until... It's a multi-part, so it's not the same thing airing, but it's like different little interviews with uh, former pro wrestlers or people that are still in the business, and whether they're wrestling big or, or they're not wrestling as much, but uh, people who who really still love wrestling. And, and yeah, I've asked a few of the uh, same questions here and there when, when it comes to like what their thoughts on are, are, are on uh, wrestling, what people say wrestling's fake, because I want to get their everybody's opinion, because it's all entertainment, but, it, but there's more to it than that meets the eye, and and I hope people realize that, and I hope people realize the work that goes into it, how much sacrifice these guys do. I think they sacrifice more than any other sport, really, to be honest with you. So, anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and uh, we'll have more, uh, probably uh, two or three more guests on, I'm, I'm hoping, anyway, before WrestleMania. Uh, if not, you know, I tell you what, it's been cool just to do this, and... Uh, there's definitely more stuff on, along the way. Plus, uh, starting in the month of May, uh, April, after day after WrestleMania, I'm going to uh, uh, start doing a daily vlog for the month of from April 8th to May 8th. It's not going to be a, you know for a year long vlog. It's just going to be just for a month since I haven't done many videos, and I I feel I owe it to everybody to do at least 30 new videos within 30 days. So I'm up for the challenge. I think it can happen. It's happened before. And this time, I really wanna. I this is. I really wanna do this at least for a month, anyway, before we end season five of the Frankie Slauson show, anyway. But anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and uh, thanks for listening to this interview. Viva La Raza, as uh, uh, Eddie Guerrero once said many times in wrestling, and Viva Los Guerrero. And thank you for just tuning in. Bye bye. <laughs>